Hello all, today we will be attempting to improve our medieval Arab and Islamic armor impression. Based on the previous video about armor, there has been a few adjustments, so let's dive straight into it. Starting from the bottom up, we have our typical medieval riding boots, with a sirwal and a qamis undershirt. The sirwal is a form of baggy trousers which was highly preferred due to its comfortable nature. You're able to ride and fight with minimal restrictions and it's also fair to say that these were worn by women in the medieval Arab and Islamic world. Because of their loose fit it was deemed as modest clothing which was paramount and still is for Muslim and Arab women. And if you look at the kamis on the shirt there could be two types. You could have the round neck or one with a line through the middle just like the one we have here. Moving on to another layer of an undershirt or a padded gambeson. This was worn as well to add an extra layer of protection and could also be worn by itself. In this instance we have another normal layer of an undershirt without the padding. It could be said that your status determined the quality of your armor and even your kamis undershirts. They could potentially have Islamic embroidery around the arms and this means you are also able to afford higher quality and the embroidery around the arms could be in gold and could have a holy text or probably verses from the Quran. What would likely be next is the chainmail armor. This was worn on top of the undershirts and could be worn without anything else just as it is. Chainmail was also worn under the garments, sometimes two at a time. In fact, it is said that the Arab cavalrymen, predominantly in the Arabian Peninsula, usually just wore chainmail shirts as their main piece of armor with the obvious armed guards, daggers and swords. And they were very, very similar to their Southern European counterparts. In fact, it was sometimes hard to distinguish between a Muslim Arab soldier and a crusader when the fighting became close and intense. This was mentioned by Egyptian and Syrian sources in the 12th and 13th century because they looked very similar. We can find some references to crusader armor in Osama ibn Munqib's book of contemplation where he says that the Frank had chainmail armor under his tunic which protected him against the spear thrust of Osama. Therefore wearing chainmail armor was a very Arab style of armor and also a European one. However, this was to change in the 12th and 13th century for the medieval Arab and Islamic world. Because what we have next is leather lamella armor. Yes, this was uncommon before the influence of the Turks and Persians in the region. It was more common for them than it was for Arabs. What was also common was a type of armor or garment known as the Kazagand which was also mentioned in Osama's contemplation whereby he states that he put it on and rode to battle. But this was going to slightly change as Lamela armor became popular in the Arab world in the 12th and 13th century. There are many references to Lamela armor in historical texts and there were mainly two types, iron and leather, although it was most likely from iron but the one we have is leather. References made by Osama such as him stating I felt something burn in my forearm, but I thought it was just from the heat of the metal lamella of my cuirass. Illustrates how lamella was when you wore it and that it did have its disadvantages in the heat. Actually there are even mentions from Osama about his father in battle, whereby they would remove their lamella cuirass to have an advantage in stealth attacks. Because of the iron lamella, when they used to ride into battle, it used to clatter together and make a sound. This would make the enemies aware that there is a imminent attack. So they would take off their armor and sacrifice safety to gain an advantage. In fact, this is how Osama's father got a massive injury and scar across his chest. So we can see that lamella was quite a popular option, most likely iron, but also leather was available. And now we're gonna have standard arm guards, they could be worn here. The ones we have are from leather. You could also have iron made ones with different patterns which depended on what you could afford. You were expected to buy your own armor in the medieval Arab world so your wealth determined the quality of your armor. Now we're going to wear a sort of turban or scarf around our neck and we will end it with a helmet which is something I'm still trying to get a hold of so unfortunately I do not have a helmet at this moment. There were a few different types of helmets though the most common one being a turban helmet. This was mostly used by ethnic Arab military men. The helmet would be an egg shape 
and the turban would be wrapped around it. Also, it would usually be imported from Italian lands and therefore, as we stated earlier, the typical Arabian warrior had more similarities in his armour with their southern European counterparts. This just shows the importance of a turban in the medieval Arab and Islamic world. Not that it isn't in our contemporary world, but there have been references made to other helmets. For example, Osama talks about how his father was a great warrior and that once he went into battle wearing full armour with the Islamic style helmet and it had a nasal. So we can gather that nasal helmets were also used by medieval Arab soldiers. Other variations included the Turkish Sharbush, which is a high crowned cap often with fur. I'll just add the weapons now without going into too much detail as we wanted to mainly focus on armour. A round leather shield would have been most likely carried a straight or slightly curved sword and a dagger. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next video.